how we doing? Yeah. Yes, that is the energy I want. Uh, how many, like a few of you probably, you've probably seen The Mummy, yeah? Yeah. yeah. More than once? Yeah. yeah. That's my go-to, because I'm always like, how many times? How committed are we? Yeah. Give me a big shout if you are so excited for this panel. Yeah, yeah I feel, that feels about right. So let me stop talking and let's get the folks out here that you're here to see. Right, you know and we love him from The Mummy, from Doom Patrol, Brendan Fraser! Northner. <laughs> All right, fellas. Uh, so, surprise, we're here to talk today about the mummy. You probably heard. Um, what I want to know so, uh, a fan company has made a bumper sticker in the past year called Honk If You Have Seen the 1999 Cinematic Masterpiece, The Mummy. Do any of you have this bumper sticker? I knew it, I knew it. So, here we are a few years later. Um, has it, how's it felt to see such love for this film and this franchise and your characters continue? <laughs> I, 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 the Mummy, you know, was basically my first job. Uh, it, it's, you know, I started off doing The Mummy and thinking to myself, so, so this is my life, you know, in these kind of movies. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Um, it, it's it's so fabulous. It's fabulous that people are still enjoying it, still loving it. Their kids are loving it. Of course, you feel slightly old. Yeah. yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. It's, that was you know. quick. <laughs> a lot. A lot of people say in the car ride over, like a lot of, oh, my mom really loves. It. <laughs> Hi, mom. Yeah. Th today I get a lot, a lot of autographs for you know. Oh, Emma, is that you? No, no, no. It's for my mom. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah, I'm good with moms, so... Yeah. It's all good. Uh, well, even I, when I thought about that bumper sticker and thought 1999, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that, that felt like it was yesterday. Um, so given that, and I know it's, it's a, a bit of time to go back through, do each of you remember, you know, when you went into audition, kind of how the film was pitched to you? Like what, what kind of what the, the long line was? Uh, this is going to be, uh, Steven was like, okay, this is, it's going to be like the Terminator, but the mummy is like Jaws. He's a shark. He won't quit. I was like, oh, Terminator shark? That's kind of cool. <laughs> I think they already made that movie, dude. But... I mean, the script was great. <laughs> Such conviction. And he would be like on the day he'd always be, oh, the good thing is is that the, the director is also the writer, so we just completely cut out the middleman. <laughs> I don't know, just do the do it the way you do it. Just what do you do? Just don't suck! <laughs> oh, constantly, don't F it up. I'm like, a, I'm, a, I'm a brand new actor, right? This is my first job, I'm there, I'm nervous as heck, I, I think I'm doing everything wrong. And every time I go, what do you think? He goes, yeah, just don't screw it up. <laughs> okay, I, I can do that. It's no. good advice. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was so- but Then he would like, oh, okay, ready, and... Action, don't suck, and the whole place would blow up and fall down, and, you know, and explode. And all right, that was awesome. That was awesome. 
I feel like if I was given the direction, don't suck, I would immediately F it up. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, and it, it being your first film, and, and I feel like it was maybe like your first like super action heavy in that way film. Um, it is a very, I mean, it's romance too, of course. We love that, but action, adventure. Uh, do you remember kind of your stunt training for the film? Sure. Uh, there, you know, there was fighting, but my stunt man was awesome. So I came out looking really good. <laughs> There were there was you know the gunplay and all that and uh, what else we uh, horses remember there's a lot we got on, no no it was camels at first but the camels are really boring <laughs> so we got on horses after all just to break it up because camels are dumb. <laughs> I, 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 nobody trusted me to ride a horse. Uh, so on the first film, uh, it was so incredibly embarrassing because I don't know if you remember the scene uh, in the campgrounds where you pull out the, the dynamite stick and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, get on my horse and just tell you, you know, stop fighting, get out of here or we'll all die or something. And um, we're shooting the scene and they bring up these apple boxes and they actually have me standing on the apple boxes with my leg over the horse and they go, action, I sit down, I say, yalla, imshi. And then I, I'm like, I want to ride off and they're like, no, 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 don't move, don't move. Get the stun guy in. You're not ready. You're not ready. And it was that embarrassing, which is what caused me to train a lot for the second movie. I was and in the I second you movie, learned. I got to do everything myself. But I remember was... your boots <laughs> on the apple box with the heel on them. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Or oh, dead. I'm not that bad. You'd be like, you'd be like, oh, he had these heels that were like this, you know. And then we'd be in the sand, so he's like always walking. Like this. <laughs> heels are falling down stairs. Okay, okay, the, the reason I had heels is because if you look at this guy, okay, the first people you meet when you do a movie is you meet the costume department, right? You gotta get your costume going. And I'm standing there and I think to myself, oh, you know, pretty impressive, uh, six foot one, almost. And, uh, no, no, it's six foot one. And, uh, and they're like, okay, we gotta do something about this guy. Let's give him some heels. And he's wearing a dress. And not tall enough, we'll put some big something on his head, so when he stands next to Brendan... So that's... So that was my... Uh, so in the next two movies, I'm running around with heels and a dress. And the facial scar tattoos, that was my idea. Oh, <laughs> No, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> what I'm hearing is it's all your fault. It's, yeah, it's on me. I'm still hung up on thinking back to the camels, and I'm thinking, you know, when you picture a majestic steed, uh, it's not a camel. It's not. So I think you're right in that, you know, horses, horses win that battle. Yay, horses! Yay, horses! <laughs> um, okay, so I know we're here to talk about the mummy, and uh, that's why you're all here, and we're here because you're here. So um, there, as Atomic Blonde pointed out, uh, Q&A microphones on either aisle. You'll see staff members with their hands up. You can go ahead and line up. I'm gonna ask a couple more questions, but then it's all you. It's all you. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off script a little bit uh, because you are both very talented and have been in... Uh... Oh, stop it. <laughs> Just uh, more. Thank you. Just... I mean, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but you've both been in many other things uh, besides The Mummy, so I just want to pick a couple of your recent projects that I'm, that I'm a fan of, because uh, I'm selfish and I have a microphone, um, <laughs> and talk about, uh, Odette, I want to talk about Star Trek Discovery, because... Uh, um, you know, first of all, it's Star Trek, so being a part of that franchise, gotta be pretty cool, and I want to hear about your experience in joining that, I mean, such a beloved universal franchise. Well... Uh, it was amazing to be cast in it, and I'm on the phone to my wife uh, on the first day when I walk on set, and I'm on the phone to her, and I'm going, sweetheart, oh my God, I'm standing in front of the bridge. It's amazing. It's so exciting. It, it, it's so stunningly beautiful, and she's like, a, a, bri a bridge to where? where, where, where? Like Star Trek, honey, the bridge, the bridge, and she's like, I don't know, I don't know. Like, that, that's great for you. So that was that was kind of put me back on earth. But no, it's 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 such an incredible um, 
friends. Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn. Here. Brooklyn, sweetheart. <laughs> it's such an amazing uh, franchise to be a part of. Um, and the, the wonderful thing is, is the show is the star. So we're all just happy to be there, all just uh, uh, enjoying the, the, just every moment. It's like every time we're, we're looking at the, 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 the structures they build, the, the, the sets, it's, it's fabulous. And it's a lot of fun, and I feel very blessed to be a part of it. That's awesome. If you're not watching Star Trek Discovery, what are you doing? Watch it. So good. Uh, similarly, if you're not watching Doom Patrol, who watches Doom Patrol? I thought a few of you might. Um, Brendan Cliff is me. Uh, not, not as much trauma, but definitely I have an, I have an angry side. Um, he's such a tremendously layered character because there is so much more beneath uh, the cursing. There's, there's a lot of that. <laughs> How has it been? Speaking of another, you know, you're joining the DC Comics universe. Doom, Doom, excuse me, Doom Patrol is pretty beloved. Um, what's it been like exploring that role? Cliff Steele was, those who know, he was a race car driver. His car went bang, and his brain got put into a big tin can man, and then he woke up under the the power of Niles Calder, his quasi boss, doctor, later enemy. You would just watch the show; you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> And he wasn't such a great guy back in the day. Um, and his journey is to redeem himself. And I loved Cliff because he is, he, he wants to become a better person. And you, you act, I, he was always written to be, um, he's, a, he's a better human being as a robot than he ever was as a human being I know, driving around in one. You know what I mean? And um, that voyage is something that's similar with all the characters that, that they all take. They don't fight bad guys, they fight their inner demons, and they take care of each other, they squabble. Um, it's its own show. We're in season four now, stay tuned. And, um, so check it out. Oh, I'm gonna tease one thing about it. In season four, I think it's episode nine, full blown. Musical. This guy. Singing. La 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 la. Singing. Can we get a little bit? No. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, what are you doing to me? You're not boss. I'll, I'll give you a, a, a beat. <laughs> oh, Ted Fair came one day. He said, Brandon, what do you, why do I punch like the girl? Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, he brought it up. Okay, he brought it up. Yes, yes, when we did the first fight scene on The Mummy, we were on the car traveling through these, all these zombie guys are jumping on the car, and I'm throwing punches, and the stunt guy comes over and he goes, um, Odette, can you do me a favor? When you're punching, can you not do this? <laughs> No, no, no. It was it was classical training, theater training in theater. You know, to, to kind of swing the punch backwards, but on camera it looks like this. I just let the stunt man do it. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, that's what they train for. It makes sense. Okay. Thank you for both indulging me. All of you for indul indulging me in non mommy questions. But now it's your turn. Um, I'm gonna switch between sides, and ideally, um, questions for both panels, please. So let's start over here on the left. Uh, please tell us your name and question. Hello, my name's Joe, and I'm from Seattle. And mm -hmm. I wanted to say, absolutely, absolutely love all your movies. This is for Brendan. Brendan, I wanna say thank you. <laughs> oh, I love your movies. <laughs> It's great because I got a chance to share some of your movies with my kids for the first time, and they started falling in love with them. I just showed them all three mommy films, and I told them, did you know that they're gonna be here? And they got excited, and this was the one they were most excited about, and I absolutely love it. Some of the things that most people, you know, may not know, your role in Monkey Bone. I absolutely love you in that. And one of my all-time favorites, Bedazzle. Yeah. I Thank you. Lisa Stavos. Great. No, gracias. We're Atlético. Los crustáceos. Wow. Roughly translated Colombian. No, thank you. I'm allergic to shellfish. 
So my question for you is, if you could portray, who is your favorite character to portray? And if you could have them meet your character from The Mummy, how do you see that going? <laughs> That's an epistolistic question. <laughs> Um, look, I loved playing Rick O'Connell. I had a great time doing that. I, I, there was so much big toys to play with. We had no idea what kind of movie we were making. We thought that it was a straight ahead action movie, part horror movie, sometimes slapstick comedy, romance, adventure. I'm missing something somewhere. And so I, I can still hear, you still hear Rachel? She'll be like, oh, no, they're going to confiscate our equity cards. <laughs> and I'm like, well, fine, I'm over here like a beaver just chewing up scenery. I think we'll get through it together, you know? Um, I loved it, though. I loved it. We were, we were, we were on location in, um, in, in the deserts of, of Marrakesh in Morocco, and that's where Lawrence of Arabia was, was shot. You can see they had that wide open vista. And um, that was never lost on, on the cinematographers, for sure. So it felt like my first experience with real big picture movie making, which was really exciting. It was really exciting. And we were really there uh, feeling the heat and everything. He had that authenticity. Of course, you know, they were like, nah, we'll just shoot it in New Mexico. I'm like, and Stephen was like, no, they'll suck. <laughs> and so, you know, we really went for the real thing. But you remember that when we were, at, what was it, it was Air Food? in the desert, oh, yeah, and you'd yeah. know that one mountain range, and we'd be driving home on these uh, little roads that had piles of white rocks that were painted white, there were no lights or anything, and uh, over the mountain range, the, the, my driver, Rashid, was like pointing things out, you know, that's where um, my mom met my dad, you know, that kind of thing. And he goes, uh, and you see that mountain range over there, if you go past that mountain range, you'll never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that eyes front. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember that one time when there was uh, our set got flooded. Do you remember that? There was all of a sudden like torrential rains. Was that in the second one? The first one? I don't remember. I just remember that they brought over military helicopters yeah. to pick us up. And it, you're getting into these helicopters, and they they did not feel like they were new or <laughs> or even taken care of or. Uh, maintained in any way and it was so you're getting into this everything is shaking we also we had um kidnapping insurance taken out on us didn't we? yeah these are the kind of things you don't necessarily want to hear about the, the, the late Jim Jackson who was the producer was a real talker okay like you have a conversation with Jim and you'd be like hey and you know and you had this con this connective thing he would say or do and you go and you know and you know and you know you could put the phone down Come back, pick it up, and go, yeah, put it down. <laughs> anyway, Jim was like, we're taking out um, kidnapping insurance on all of you. And we were, <laughs> it's just like for a, he was like, yeah, we're going to take our kidnapping insurance and a million bucks on you and a million bucks on Rachel and, and Kevin. It was 125 35 on me. Uh, no, yeah. but no, Kevin, Kevin J. O'Connor goes, I just want to ask, how much did you take out on me? <laughs> Remember what he said? He was like, I don't know, 250. <laughs> well, that'll really mess with your self esteem. I wouldn't want to know the number. Yeah. Wouldn't want to know. Thank you for your question. Uh, and you know, that reminded me, so thank you. I'm not reminding you, I'm well aware. There's more than one mummy movie, there are three. So you both. Uh, two. Two. Yeah, well, as far yeah, as I remember. I know, that's fair. I, I, don't, I don't remember the two. No, no, there's only two. Only two, um, but you did get to both, you got to return to your two roles, just the, the second time only. Um, and that, but that's not something, you know, you, you get to do always, and when you make films and TV, you, you play the role, you walk away, um, but you got to come back, you have a sense of this is this world, these are the many things that, you know, we are hitting, action, romance, comedy. Uh, what was it like to come back with the knowledge, you know, of having played the characters and getting to develop them? It was like going back for another semester of college. <laughs> because we just finished and they went, no, get back here. We turn and, and you, you were the second movie. Oh, Dad, you held the fort down. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. He did. He stayed, he stayed behind. 
he all started off back to London with our air conditioning. And he, you know, he was stuck out there with the horses instead of um, yeah, no, He did. He, he, oh, I, gotta, I love you, man. That oh, was thank you, man. That I was an it. It, was, it was very funny because I, I didn't really know the schedule as far as everybody else is concerned or whatever. I just knew I'm going to Morocco for quite a while. And we're there, and they're shooting, and they're shooting, and I get to like, hey, how you guys doing? Good to see you. And they're like, all right, have a good time. And they all buggered off, and I'm there by myself with the stun guys. But it was, it was really fabulous. It was really fabulous. I loved it. You're all alone. Oh. It's me and my horse. <laughs> who, was, who was extra short. Very and your bird. <laughs> my bird. And your bird. And my bird. He was the only one who knew how to work the bird. Well, the bird the trainer didn't know how to work the bird. <laughs> oh, Dad knew how to work the bird. The bird was from England. So the bird was like, I'm sorry, what is this desert? It's very hot here. What am I supposed to be doing? How, how do I fly in this heat? It's too hot. I'm just going to sit in the shade. Yeah, but the first one was like, just flew away. <laughs> and then they got like the spare bird and you're the only one I trusted. They're like, get O'Dead. Because then it would fly too and then we can all go get back to the hotel. Well, I would imagine though, that's like an extra layer of job security, one, but having that skill probably upped your kidnapping insurance. Like, <laughs> well, well, I, the, the, the interesting thing was I was $125, 35 dollars. Uh, translated loosely to Israeli shekels is 700 Israeli shekels or something. But uh, the bird was, you know, 25,000. <laughs> so. Well, birds are priceless, I yes, don't know. Yes, priceless. <laughs> um, over here on our right, what's your name and question? Uh, my name is Christy Carney, and um, th this is for Brendan. Um, and speaking of college, my husband and I graduated from Cornish in 88 and 89, respectively. And we just wanted to say, welcome back to Seattle. Thank you, so Christy. happy that you're here. How, how are you? I'm doing great. Is James here? No, he had to stay home. We had a yard. Tell him I say hello. Say hello. I will. I will. We went to college together. <laughs> At Cornish College. That's what you said. And I just we really just wanted to welcome you back and say we're so pleased and so happy for your career and the way things have been going. We're just super duper happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. Uh, over here on our left, what's your name and question? Hi, so my name is Conrad and I'm from Seattle and very honored to meet you at the panel. And thanks for the fist bump, Brendan. That was super epic when I was like eating lunch. So thank you so much. <laughs> thanks. And then also, um, anybody um, follow me on Instagram because I have interviewed 60, 69 um, famous people just wanted to advertise um, that. But anyways, on to the- Oh, plug, good for you. <laughs> Anyways, on to the question. I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this question, but what is something you've always wanted to do on your bucket list? Not jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Next question. Why do so many people want to do that? It's an act of choice. I don't know. What about you? What's, what's oh, no, you? no. I had to, I had to, uh, on Resident Evil, I had to supposedly jump out of a helicopter, which I didn't do, the stunt guy did, but I, I, I was dropped from a, this crane uh, with a wire strapped to my back and just dropped over a, a parking lot, and it's still, till today, I get uh, sweaty hands when I think about it. I, I don't, uh, yeah, no. So being an actor is very glamorous, is what you're saying, all the time. Very. Very. Because there's always a costume guy to change your pants. <laughs> the more you know, the more you know. Thank I you apologize so much. to Resident Evil Costume Department. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. <laughs> um, hi, over here on the right. What's your name and question? I'm not wrong. <laughs> 
It's always nice to have someone to change your pants. <laughs> My name is Terry. I'm from Mount Lake Terrace, which is a suburb of Seattle. Uh, this is for both of you, uh, or one of you, depending on how this one goes. What is uh, your funniest memory, uh, whether it be a practical joke, something went wrong, uh, at either of yours expense if it's a practical joke? Uh, what do you remember as being the funniest thing that ever happened on the set? <sighs> yeah, no, Arnold. Arnold was very, uh, very funny. I, I just, just working with this guy as my first job, and again, I, I grew up feeling like I'm relatively good sized uh, and uh, you know slightly uh, fit and then I stand next to this guy in my high heels and dress and the director goes okay so you have to stop him and tell him you know live today fight tomorrow right and and I'm like grabbing his shoulder and I'm like this is cement I was like, I was like, I try to do this I think you can even see the pictures we signed you just see me behind his shoulder going Fight today, you know, live today, fight tomorrow, you know, it's, like, it's just, this guy is so powerful, and the funny thing is, we're taking pictures, and I'm, he's still the same thing. Uh, but Arnold Vosloo, Arnold Vosloo, we're in our food, we're in the middle of the desert, it's just nothingness, and just the, this, this hotel. Uh, he decides, uh, that's it, man, I'm, I'm done, I'm, I want a, a bonfire, I'm done. So he goes, and I don't uh, my, my South, African. South African accent is not a very good, good accent, but he just disappears into the desert, <laughs> right? And we're all like, this guy's insane. He had like three or four days off, I think, in a row. Yeah, yeah. The, is he insured for the kidnapping? <laughs> he, 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 so anyway, it's nighttime. We're all around the, 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 the outside there, and he's kind of out of the darkness. He's coming in with one log. He found a tree, and he's like, that's it, we do bonfire now. I mean, if you want something done, right, you got to go get your own tree. I heard he went and he bargained with some kid for a donkey cart full of, like, a cord of wood, and then escorted the kid back to the fire pit that he dug, put stones around it, stacked the wood, stayed overnight guarding it, or someone would rip it all off and killed scorpions with his bare hands. Oh yeah, no, he used to do, yeah, he used to do this. Seriously? The scorpions. I mean, man, that was a hell of a good fire, wasn't it? Uh, it was fabulous. He, 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 was, yeah. he was so funny. It's like the first time I met him, I think, was in, in Marrakesh, in the hotel Marrakesh. And he's like, nah, screw that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping close to the pool, man. I'm not, I'm not up in the building. No, I, I, I want to be close to the ground. He's such a great character. I like that's all I want to say in every host offer from now on. I'm like bad pool. Always. Remember that weird that was a weird hotel, wasn't it? It was like this tourist hotel. You remember the Czechoslovakian and Stein guys that would stack up all the furniture in the in the lobby of the hotel because they were bored? That, and, and it's a dry nation, so they pulled their per diem together and they bought one last bottle of whiskey and like cuzzled it. And then videotaped each other making up stunts, like, you'll see the thing. I'm diving into this stack of like coffee tables and glass and like all this shit. And they just go crash and they fall down, they pop up and they're all bleeding and pointing and laughing at each other. It's the best thing in the world. And we're just like, oh, you guys are sick in the head. Everybody's gotta have a hobby. That one just seems like it comes with a lot of like. Or was it just me that night? Oh, no, 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 I, 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 I had that, when I stayed in the, in the desert with the stunt guys, I stayed with them in the same hotel, and we were working together every day, and then at nighttime, they decided they wanted to do, like, uh, some sparring, and they started sparring with each other, and I'm like, oh, I want to spar, and they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm like, no, come on, I'll spar, and the guy just stood there, and I punched him and went, ah, my wrist, <laughs> and I was done. It's very strange, you know, when you get used to just swinging your arm and people are falling over when they don't fall over. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it takes getting used to. Thank you so much for your question. Be before uh, uh, we end this, you have to stand next to each other so we can see this size difference. <laughs> Hi, Mom. That, that was my bucket list.
Thank you very much. Thank you. I had to step out so I didn't bring the height curve down. <laughs> Where did you go? Yeah, what happened there? I we stood up, you just moved. Like, bye. I'm not, I don't want to be in your pictures. It's all you. It's all you. Hi over here on the left. What's your name and your question? Hi, I'm Cinderella. I'm from Germany. I'm living in America. And so um, I'm sorry you think the camera been dumb. <laughs> I volunteer for several years camels and they're very smart. They, they have, I must say it when you do anything wrong, they will never forget. And, and so basically they, I'm in a lot of shit. <laughs> That's okay, the shit is really good for the grass. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, uh, they are in Germany in this time, 1990, your movie came out in Germany, in German language. It came out in 1990? Short I have a little language barrier. Yeah, no, I, I, your movie came it's out. Like, it's like the, the song, 909 says schluff balloon, right? There you go. Now, I saw your movies first in German language. This is my question. Have you ever seen in other language your mummies? Have you? Um, I once saw the guy who dubs my voice That's in, good. in German. <laughs> <laughs> you look kind of like Winston Churchill. <laughs> They're really impressive. No, when you look the whole bunch outfit up with a line life blinding, uh, you you know the series I Love Lucy. Yeah. Yes, yes. And and uh, she did one part, the Jumbo Girl. I have the whole bunch outfit. This is new in a different collection with a two D fruity. <laughs> I remember. Nice. remember. Thank you for your question. Yes, sure. Okay, bye. Thank you, sure. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You and Mongo over here on the right. What's your name and question? Uh, hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm from Bainbridge Island. And um, I uh, have a question for a bit, actually. Um, obviously, I love the mummy and stuff, and I say quotes from it every damn day. And um, I, however, wanted to ask you about Destiny 2 and the absolute plot twist that happens with Osiris. And how did you feel about that? <laughs> Because that was the greatest plot twist that Destiny has ever seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love Destiny. I don't actually play the game. So, okay, don't anyway. I'm an old man. Awkward. Oh, like, this whole thing. Of, well, listen, this is what happens, right? My son plays video games, and I try to... This is... Am I getting in trouble? Uh, my son... Okay. No, I got the camels mad at me now. Right, right? I know. Okay, okay well, listen. Wait, 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 wait. My son plays the game. I'm coming in to, to join him, and I'm going like, Hey, I'd like to pay. And he goes, okay. He gives me the controller, and I'm like, How do I... How do... What, what button? Hold on, let me get my my glasses and I can't but and by the time I'm even close to moving he's already finished the game so it was one of those very complicated but I, I they they spend about 45 minutes every time I work to explain to me what's going on and it sounds very exciting <laughs> it really does I, I, I love the character. I do. I love the character, but uh, but yes, I, I haven't played the game. Oh. Well, you should try it sometime. I, I hear it's absolutely fabulous, but I don't, I don't play any game. Okay, the camels. Camels are... Can we talk about camels? I love the camels. The camels and the birds. I come back on the camel at the end of the first one, so I, you know, I love the camels. That's right! Do you remember? My character was supposed to die. Yeah, and they wrote you back in. Yeah, when I put you, when I, when I say goodbye yeah. to you in the tunnel, and I'm like, you know, save the girl, kill the creature. In that oh, all goes bang. Yeah, and everything falls down, yeah. And then Steve Summers, when I thought, I thought I'm getting fired. I came back to the hotel after our night shoot. I said to my brother, 
they're, they're firing me. He hates me. Every time the director does this, he's just thinking, why did I, why did I hire this guy? Oh my God. But, uh, and then he comes back to me and he goes, you know what? Art of Bay. Everybody loves Art of Bay. It yes. is. They yeah. love you. Yeah. 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 It's very lucky. Very lucky. Thank you for your question. Next time we're here, I'm going to ask about Destiny and you better have played. Okay, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Oh, you're on the left. What's your name and question? Hi, um, my name is Gina. Uh, originally from LA, but moved here to Brenton, Washington now. Um, so um, I wanted to say that your movies, The Mummies, um, was something my family and I bonded over. Um, so my parents, and now that I'm also now mom, um, I'm watching your movies, all the movies, uh, with my son. So it's definitely something that stays with me because it was some, like a bonding moment with my family. Sometimes we don't always get along, but definitely those movies were something that brought our family together and just to talk about. Um, so I just wanted to know if there were scenes or anything from any of the movies that you've done that were like memorable to you or wanted to make sure it was like memorable to your fans or those that watched it. All of it! <laughs> We were just glad to have a job, lady. <laughs> he, he's being very humble. He's being very humble. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be selfish again because I have a microphone. I'm sorry, but you'll appreciate it. Um, we've talked about the mummy. We've talked about camels and stunts and fighting, but romance. Um, it's such a lovely romantic movie, essential relationships, like, oh, just, you know, I was, oh, that's a tangent, that doesn't matter. You're talking about the relationship between me and Horace. Uh, yes, <laughs> obviously, it's my favorite. And I'm John honest. Hanna and his camel. <laughs> yes. You kissed the camel, didn't you? <laughs> that's, you got real close. Uh, but I want to hear, like, how, what it was like working with Rachel on these films. She's Rachel. fantastic. <laughs> Rachel was brilliant. She was ready for everything. She played it with heart. She got down to the nitty gritty of being the kick ass librarian. <laughs> she wasn't scared of a ladder. <laughs> Rachel was, is, she's wonderful. She's just wonderful. And she, she was missed on the third one. And, 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 no, hang on. We miss you too! There's an elephant in the room. <laughs> Maria's great too. But she wasn't Rachel, and I think I'm not, you know what I mean. So anyway. Who's, anyway, camels, camels. Who saw the fourth one? Too soon? <laughs> Too soon? Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, let's go here on the right. Please tell us your name and your question. Hi, my name is Lauren and I'm from Raised in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, my question is, could you uh, go a little bit more in depth about what filming in the Moroccan Desert was like and any particular challenges that you remember the more hilarious about? <laughs> oh, be funny, like right now? Like, like now, now? Okay, uh, <laughs> we got wiped out by a sandstorm. That was exciting in the real world. Remember that? That would happen. No, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the scorpions, you, you show up on set and you, there's a whole bunch of scorpion wranglers. Oh, yeah. Them. These will kill you, but don't worry. We have the wranglers that, that will catch the scorpions and it's just a bunch of guys walking with a stick. Yeah, they had like a piece of rebar up in the rocks. And on the call sheet, they gave that, there was the snake guide. Yes. There was like this one snake, that had a little doodad yellow thing on his head. And they're like, you see this? At best, we don't have to amputate your leg before we fly you out of here. Just, just run away from it if you can. Of course, I had to go shake a leg when the airplane scene was going down and the road was really bad and the honey wagon, the toilet wagon got a broken axle. So anyway, we're all sneaking off to go talk to a rock. And so I'm out there doing my visit. And I look down, what is it? Is that snake? Is that snake? Right there. What do you think I'm holding? Well, there's a snake right there. I ran. Yeah, good times. That was hilarious. 
hilarious. I think it fulfilled your, your request, though, perfectly. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love that there was a scorpion wrangler when you said that first. I'm like, did I hear that correctly? And I did. What a fun job title to have. I don't know. It's just guys <laughs> stabbing rocks all day long. Yeah, and then they catch stuff, and they come over, and they go, oh, look at this. Look at this. This is great. Look at this. They put it in a water all over the place. Oh, no, like, you keep that. I'm good. I'm good. Over here on the left, what's your uh, name and question, please? Hello, I'm Nathan from Idaho Falls, and I gotta say, the first couple times I saw The Mummy, it scared the hell out of me, but it became one of my all-time favorite movies, and like I first saw it when I was five years old. And anyways, this question's for both of you, so, you know, you had to juggle a lot of comedic timing, and you know, just action work, and dramatic chops and everything, and some romantic chemistry, so how were you able to bring all those together for your performances? The power of dumb luck. <laughs> Never underestimate it. <laughs> Odette? I 100% I agree. I, uh, uh, if one of the scenes uh, of when we were on the bus, do you remember when we were on the bus on the second one and we're fighting the mummies on the bus? And uh, they were like, okay, so Brendan has a stunt guy that he's working with and um, we can't really fit the stunt guy in here, so you just throw yourself around. <laughs> and I swear to God, there was nobody there, and I was just like an idiot, just throwing my <laughs> against the walls. <laughs> uh, and it worked, and I didn't have uh, anybody complain about my... Uh, and I, I, was, I was fighting an imaginary half-mummy, because the CG put it in later, and I, I had a brilliant idea on the day where you're like, we're fighting, and he's there, what if I poke him in the eyes, like the Three Stooges? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, try it, yeah, so you like that, yeah. And there was like revolution, and oh my god. We'll just put the goo in later, it'll be great. So there's me, fighting the half stooge, eyeless mummy and he's bouncing around like a sock monkey behind him. <laughs> it's a leap of faith when you make movies like this. You gotta believe what you're doing or nobody else will. It's 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 running around in the on the set in, in, in London in the tunnels and I, I'm I'm I think I had a cold or whatever and I'm get away and all the rest of it and cut <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god my throat is killing me. <laughs> so it's yeah he is really cool in real life. Me, I... Thank you so much for your question. Thank you so much for answering it. It was an honor to meet you. I'm glad to, to join you in Seattle. Thank you. That's a lot. Come on, go over here. Hello, what's your name and your question? Uh, hi, I'm Aiden. I'm from Edmonton, so a fellow Canadian Seattleite. <laughs> Uh, this is a bit of an odd question, but yours is my favorite SNL monologue of all time. Do you have any stories about your time on SNL? Well, before that monologue that I don't remember at all, giving that you're talking about, it's live TV and it's SNL and, you know, to do it right. <laughs> and just before every, just before, you know, it's very exciting, the week leading up to it, and then it's Saturday night and you go live. And just before all this happened, Lord Michael just walks up to you. He just kind of goes, well, you know, it's just, uh, it's all about confidence. <laughs> and that's what you get before you present yourself to the world. After that, you don't remember much of anything. It's about, it's about honestly changing wardrobe really quickly <laughs> underneath the bleachers, in the dark, chasing people around you, pulling your clothes off, putting clothes on, putting hair, all that stuff. Um, it's, been, it's a show about undressing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, the glamorous life of an actor. I also feel like uh, just be confident is a different version of don't suck. It's <laughs> 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 a nicer way to say it. Um, over here on the left, what's your name and question? Hi, my name is CJ. I live in Seattle. And this question is for O'Day. I love you as part of the day, but I'm also used to hearing your voice, specifically as Dr. Fate in Justice League Unlimited and as Raish Al Ghul in Young Justice. And my question was, how does voice acting for you compare to like real uh, comes to we, we were just talking about that in Funny, the car. You should have. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about it in the car on the way here. There's something 
there's something wonderful about not having to learn your lines and not having to put a costume and makeup on. There's something really fabulous about that, so let's just start right there. Then, you don't even have to wear pants. <laughs> During COVID, I was in my closet, in my pajamas, recording. It was wonderful. There's something really, uh, there's something really wonderful about doing voiceovers uh, because you know your voice is such a big part of of acting, of delivering drama, and uh, it's 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 a lot of fun being able to do that without any pressure of kind of knowing your lines or everything else around it. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any job you can do with the cameras is automatically my favorite job. Uh, over here on the right, what's your name and your question? Hello, I am Tyler Jacobs. I am, live in Tacoma, Washington. And uh, I think you are both such great actors and you're both so funny. Um, I love Encino Man and Blast from the Past. And, uh, Also, um, but I I wanted to know what animal you would think you would be if you were an animal, and in 1999 would you have had the same answer? A Labrador running around the beach collecting sticks. <laughs> you want it? Can I have it? I'm gonna bury it. Will you throw it? Okay. Who does that remind you of? This guy. No, it's not a gorilla or a monkey. There, I said it. Yeah, no, we have uh, we have a little dog named Bailey, and he's he's a tiny little thing, and he's very scared of absolutely everything. And me, I feel like him many times. I'm just like, oh, it is very scary out there, isn't it? And they want you to act and be brave. I can do this. You can do it. You got this. You got this little low dad. You got this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is when I feel like it is my duty to point out there is a very sweet dog in the front row that has distracted yes. me multiple times. You're very cute. My favorite picture we took. Yes. We took a picture with the dog. Yeah. I, yeah. Can I get a picture later too? <laughs> well, we'll do it after, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway, panel, right. Um, dogs in the front row are very dangerous for me. Um, hi over here, what's your name and your question? Oh, hey, my name is Roman and I'm from <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm probably the oldest person asking questions today. Uh, uh, seeing you both on, on the stage, it's not like just like the mummy reunion, right? So it's like mummy and Resident Evil and Inkheart and uh, Resident Evil. Uh, sorry, I I need to load more that you like your filmography on I will search on IDB, sure. Uh, go, go with the question. Yes, yes. question. Huh? Okay, so do you have any role that uh, kind of change you as a person? Like something that like you lived, like that you feel and you become a different person, like better or worse, I don't know. And it's a question for both of you. So do you have these kind of roles? Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> no, you go ahead, you go ahead. Um, all, all of them, you learn something from each part, I think. I mean, it's just acting, all right? It's, it's, it's make believe, we all kind of know that, but it's sort of a contest who can make believe in a way that, that everybody else believes that they believe. <laughs> it, um, e each part's gonna change you a little bit. You take something from it, a place you went. I mean, we're all here because we saw this movie that we ran around in the desert making 20 blow, but whatever years ago. <laughs> it, it really, it changed the trajectory of our lives. And um, I think, I think you, you should get something from all of them. You know, at least I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, real quick, I'm curious, who here has been on uh, the Mummy theme park ride at Universal Parks? Have, you, have, you, have either of you been on the ride? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. It's yeah. a ride I really enjoy. Wait, I can ride yeah. it one, one time. What's that? I can ride it one time. Because it, it's, it's very intense. It, it's, it's, it's incredibly intense. And like running in the tunnels, uh, you know, when it turns around, and then it backs up, and then it flies off, you hear me go, ah, ah, ah. Because, <laughs> No, I'm just, 
this joking? It's being I am it's being repaired. repaired right now. It's gonna come back out. They had to it's, put new tech in it, I'm told. Yeah, right. it's reopening soon. Tech from the third movie, apparently. Oh. <laughs> third movie. There's no third movie. No heartbeat. Anyway. <clears throat> Over here, hi, what's your name and question? Test, test. Hello. Hi, Brent. Hello, Oded. I'm Max from Seattle, born and raised. I have a comment for one of you and a question for both of you. Brent, I was sorry to hear about the Batgirl film. Yeah. Yes. We all are. Yeah. And now the question, it's uh, pretty obvious by now that 2017 mommy film was but lightly less like a fail, uh, more failure. <laughs> My, and, Ouch! As, as well as its attempt to jumpstart a shared monster uni universe for Universal. My question is, if the Mummy 1999 film followed a similar strategy and was the first of like a shared universe, do you think it would have had, the Dark Universe would have had a better chance of succeeding? Listen, dude. <laughs> We know how hard The Mummy is to make. I tried to do it three times. <laughs> that was its own picture. It, 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 this, it's kind of not my department. Yeah, yeah there's so many, so many things that go into making a film. You have no idea. We had no idea when we shot the first Mummy that it's going to be what it ended up being. We, we had no idea, and, and he's not kidding. I mean, Rachel was absolutely incredible, but I heard Rachel going, oh, this is the end of my career. <laughs> you know? It's like, she, she gave it all, she was incredible and wonderful, but we, nobody had any idea, and I was just happy to be there. You know, it was like, for me, it was my first job. I was like, oh my God! But we, nobody knew what it would be like. Thank you. Thank you also for Star Trek Discovery and Doom Patrol, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Hi, over here. What's your name and your question? Hi, my name is Kim. Oh my god, I'm so loud. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kim. I'm from Olympia. Um, my kind of statement question is. Are you guys terrified of bugs? Because because the mummy, I am forever terrified of bugs. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> um. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Sorry, just you that start. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you one, one terrifying story. Uh, my wife and I were in Hawaii in one of those uh, very um, kind of natural surroundings, uh, whatever, and then it was evening time and we were just attacked by these huge, huge flying cockroaches. Huge, humongous. And uh, some of them accidentally died. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we made our way back to our uh, sanctuary, to our rooms, and to, for safety. So rooms, I'm saying, because separate rooms, my wife and I, we did, you know. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But uh, the, the, the scary thing was we woke up the next day, and they were all gone. Like, the dead ones, gone. Not, not, nothing left of them. Meaning, pretty crawlers just came in at the night and just... Just think about that and enjoy it. I think that probably helped with that phobia, so it was a good story. Yeah, I think I'm further traumatized by you guys, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, over here, what's your name and what's your question, please? Hi, my name is Elia, and I just want to say that my friend over there provided the scarf for the pepper in the photo this morning, so that was awesome to be a part of. It was amazing. Um, well, I was going to ask you about Blast from the Past because I adore that movie. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, I'm going to stick with the theme of the day. As a large animal equine massage therapist, I'm going to ask both of you horse related question. Brandon, what was your favorite experience of working with horses on set of movies and why was it Freckles? And, um, oh, did, did you keep up with your horsemanship? I'll go first. Um, you mean my, my horse was. You said freckles. Or speckles? Um, his name was Pekas. Oh, Pekas. But it translates, yes? In, 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 in Pekas. Right. Uh, which translates to spots or freckles. Um, and I've learned in Latin culture when you name animals, you don't call them Fred. You, know, you call them, you know, Cosmo. Or, you know, you give them a name. And so, or you name them what they are. Like, tan spots, something like that. So he, yeah, my, horse, my horse was amazing. I took him home. I FedExed him back to, to <laughs> the, 
to uh, where I live in New York. I gave him to my oldest son, who is on the spectrum, and whether he's a big, strong horse, and whether or not Griffin wanted to ride him on any particular day didn't matter because if you get a bucket and a brush, give it to a kid who's happy to do this all afternoon. It works for both of them. So, and he needed a job. The horse that is. Thank you. Thank you. We're running low on time, so I want to get through as many questions as we can. Um, so over here on the left, your name and question, please. Um, wait, you mind if I take my mask off? Go right ahead. Um, my name is Colton. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you got this. You got this. You got this. Yeah. You know how much courage it takes to stand at a microphone in a room full of strangers? It's you right now, little man. You got this. Listen to that. You can do it. So my question is, did you feel like you had to change any part of your acting style in order to immerse yourself into the character that you play? I find it's, it's the easiest if you follow the script. <laughs> <laughs> or listen to the director. It really helps to wear cool clothes, too. <laughs> and show up to work on time. Yeah. All good tips. Thank you so much. Then we can do two more questions. So we'll go over here. Please tell us your name and question. Um, oh, hello. Um, my name is Shannon. I'm from the Seattle area, and I also went to Cornish. Um, yeah! <laughs> I actually studied with Carrie Skalski, and I think that y'all studied together as well. If you like to talk about this, so <laughs> I was very happy. Um, my question is, do you have any favorite Cornish memories, or for both of you, just college memories in general? Just to, I'm from Seattle, by the way. I went to Cornish College, graduated in 1990 when we were up on the hill. Um, it, it was a singular defining experience in my life. I met so many like-minded individuals who support the arts and who thrive together. And that's what this town is really about. Yeah. So I'm so happy. It, it really set me up to, to feel like when you're acting, it's not just about two people bitching at each other. You know, it's about something more than that, really. It's about being invested in the work that you do. And I, I got that work ethic while I was there. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't go to college in the States. I went to a very classical uh, drama school in England. So my son is now uh, going to college and my daughter and so on. We're always talking about college. And I have the best excuse. I, I, I didn't go to college here. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, over here on the right, and this will be our last question. Oh, uh, hello, my name is George. Sorry. I'm uh, here from Seattle. Uh, ironically, I was the last one to get an autograph from you today, Brennan. So that was an awesome experience. I want everyone, oh, hey, everyone. Yeah, I want everyone in the room to know that um, he took time out of his personal schedule to sign an autograph for a service member of the military that was in tears over not being able to get a ticket. And I really appreciate you doing that. It's very humble. Awesome to see you do that. Um, and then 
My question is, I'm a firm believer that cinematic gold stems from you know, moments of improvisation. And I would like to ask both of you if you had any moments on either one of the films uh, that were improv that stuck with you or you thought was cinematic gold. I, 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 guess I already said the Stooges thing, so this one's all you. <laughs> the, 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 on the scene in the bus, at the end of the fight, uh, Steve Summers, the director, goes, okay, so uh, let's end with a funny line. Uh, <laughs> it's my first bus ride. Good, thank you. Uh, I'm not a very good improv guy, I'm not. I'm not a very good improv guy. Yes, no, I'm not. not a very good improv guy. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your thoughtful questions. Thank you for coming. Thank you both for joining us. Appreciate it. Please give these two a huge round of applause for the mummy.